Hello and welcome back and today we want to compare two NASes from the guys at Synology. We want to look at the brand new DS1621 Plus and see how it compares against its predecessor, the DS1618 Plus. Now before we go any further, just like a couple of my other comparisons recently, I do want to touch on something. Right now I've got a couple of rack mount devices Give or take about five meters away over there, running through a RAID rebuild video that's coming very, very soon. They're going to take about four days, and unfortunately, no matter how much I try, I can't limit that fan noise as much as I would like. So that's going to be that background hiss, and I do apologize if that is being picked up by the mic. I'm trying everything to get rid of it, but I am hitting a bit of a barrier. So let's push forward, and I just wanted to apologize for that noise. So these two nazis, they represent just over two years difference. I think it's almost two and a half actually release difference between these two NASs. Obviously I don't have the 1618 Plus here in the studio today but you know we've used it on the channel enough times and we're very familiar with the specs that we can talk about what's good and what's bad and which one is ultimately better for your money because we have three main questions to ask today. One, should you buy the brand new NAS or the old one if it's still around? Number two, we want to know if you did buy the 1618 in the last two and a half years, is it worthy of an upgrade? And the third one is, is the brand new NAS a good NAS overall? Not just between these two, but is it a good solution overall? Now, let's get that first one out of the way. Which one of these two is better? It's that one. It's this one over here. It's the one up right here. Okay, so if that's all you wanted from the video, thank you very much. Click subscribe. I'll see you next time. But the rest of you... Um, the reason I have come up with that incredible snap decision is as soon as you go through a number of the specifications, you suddenly realize that there is genuinely nothing about the old unit that I would argue makes it a better choice between them. It is certainly a product of an evolving series in the portfolio from Synology, and it is a worthy successor to that of the 1618 Plus. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about the users that want to upgrade, users that have got the 1618 or have got a previous generation to that and are wondering about whether they should go 1618, you know, nice and cheap, a Black Friday sale, a clearance here or there, or they should go straight for this one right here. Now, they both arrive at a very, very, very similar price point, around 750 to something around the 800 quid mark, including tax, and again, that doesn't include your storage media, so you will have to purchase that separately. What I will say is that between them, this has more future proofing so let's get it out of the way early doors what have they both got in common let's talk about you know regardless of which one of these two you go for what you're going to get uh, the best so straight away they both support dsm 6.2 with dsm 7 around the corner they both arrive with a huge amount of support of pc and mac systems as well as being suitable for home and business users they've got multimedia support uh, with applications such as photo station video station music station and plex media server and synology moments and of course Synology Photos in DSM-7 later down the line. They both arrive with support of 1080p transcoding, although 4K is something we're going to have to touch on later on. They both arrive with support in, uh, inside for dealing with large-style file processing, uh, multi-user input, a great floating point overall, while being accessed by multiple users and apps at the same time, with both of them supporting a huge amount of memory. In fact, both of them supporting DDR4 memory at that. They both arrive with a great um, combination of hardware and software inside, and they both arrive as they are six bays with a wide degree of RAID support. RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, RAID 50, RAID 60, and of course, SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, that wonderful fluid RAID system that allows you to mix and match the drives inside your system and still get all the overall capacity. In the like, Most people, when they buy a device like this, they will all go one of two ways. One, they'll fully populate the device, the device on day one with maybe fours or six or whatever hard drives they have in mind, or they'll partially populate, otherwise known as partial population. They'll put maybe three drives in and then add drives later. Regardless of which one of those two situations you're in, as time wears on, your space is gonna fill up and you're either gonna to need to replace some of those drives with bigger drives or introduce new drives. SHR allows you to add bigger drives and allow the RAID to still absorb and be able to utilize more of that space. Traditional RAIDs like RAID 5 and RAID 6, if you try to mix and match drives with different capacities, it will class every single drive as the smallest available drive. So you could have five 10TB drives and one 1TB drive, it's only gonna see 
one TB drives. SHR balances the system so it always has one drive's worth of safety net denoted to the largest drive and then all the other space becomes available. So it's very, very handy. There's the surveillance application, surveillance station that arrives 8.2 currently. Both of them support it very, very well of up to 40 cameras with two licenses included. Both support virtual machine applications as well with both um, Synology's uh, virtual machine manager application and active backup allowing you to back up virtual machines to this system. So VMs, VMware, vSphere, that sort of thing, oh, sorry, and um, Hyper-V, all of them all backed up nicely within the system with background snapshot and hyper backup as well for a multi-tiered backup solution utilizing the cloud or Synology C2 as well as USB backups, NAS to NAS backups and more. They can both be expanded by an additional 10 total drives with two 5 back expansions in the DX517 connected via eSATA and they both arrive with three years of manufacturer's warranty and have got four LAN ports on the rear and some USB ports to boot. They are very similar, is what I'm saying. They both use the same chassis, metal in design, both got a very similar power consumption and the same noise level. They're really, really similar. So regardless of which one you have or buy in the end, they're still very, very competent devices, but you didn't come in to know what makes them the same. You wanna know what's different. Well, let's focus on those areas of difference between them. The biggest one, let's face it, is that processor. Now. When the 1618 Plus first arrived on the scene, one of the biggest complaints that flowed around about it was that processor. Synology for a long time people felt had been reliant on Intel Atom based architecture for quite a while in the C2538 and the C3538 range of processors. Now, they are competent processors, there's you know no arguing with that. They don't have embedded graphics though, and on top of that, they were just a bit underwhelming. These were 2017-18 CPUs, which, you know, didn't exactly wow anyone for the most part. And when people were looking at the system, they were watching Intel Atom or Denverton-based processors arriving on the scene with a number of their other systems underneath them arriving with Celerons with embedded graphics. Then you saw the ones above it. You saw dual-core Pentiums and Xeons arriving. And then you had this kind of relic processor in the form of that Atom. Now, that Atom processor is still very, very good, and Synology really got the most performance out of it in terms of DSM, but I think we can all agree that we've been around the Atom processors for long enough that unless they moved into some of the 2019-2026 core variants that are floating around, there's even an 8 as well, I believe, they needed to look elsewhere, and a lot of people waited and waited, and then finally, we got an AMD Ryzen-based processor in a NAS from Synology, the V1500B. It is a uh, um, Ryzen embedded, so it's not like a Ryzen 3 5 or 7. This is a CPU that's a modified SOC, all in that same processor that utilizes Ryzen components. The result is it is a quad core based processor, doesn't have embedded graphics, but it's 2.2 gigahertz in clock speed, and it arrives with four gig of DDR4 ECC memory that can be upgraded all the way up to 32 gig. Now in the memory stakes, things are largely identical, but comparing that processor against that of the Intel uh, Denverton C3538 Atom processor, it really is no contest. There are no formal benchmarks out there for this CPU, could it, in the world of servers at least, very, very new. But it has to be added that even conventional measurements, comparing it against likewise AMD processors and other processors with the same kind of architecture, we find that that CPU is two or three times the efficiency and power overall than that of the Celeron Pro, uh, the Atom processor. Clock speeds are identical, but it's how much you can do with it. And I do think this CPU is going to represent a big change in that family line from Synology, with that CPU appearing on more and more devices such as 8 bays, uh, 12 bay rack mounts, and stuff like that. Because it's a great middle point in terms of processor. And in our tests we've already done with things like Plex Media Server, Video Station, and Surveillance, it has seemingly won the day in almost every way. Now, the CPU and the memory isn't the only difference between them that makes this one superior. Another area um, of improvement 
is to do with the fact that the newer device has M2 NVMe SSD caching bays inside it. It has two of them that support up to 2280 length NVMe's and that means you can improve the internal performance down the line of those slower but arguably larger and more uh, larger capacity and more cost effective hard drives. The SSDs leverage their high IOPS, high performance and low latency and bestow that performance towards caching, more commonly accessed files, smaller files, shared drive files, basically the data that's being accessed the most and it's more beneficial to the system to have cloned onto SSD in that sense. Having that option is great. You do have to buy a couple of SSDs to populate it, but I would argue that even having that opportunity to upgrade the internal performance down the line is very, very good indeed. Now, both of them have got four 1GB LAN ports and both of them arrive with PCIe Gen 3 times 8 slots on the rear for upgrades. So again, a lot of similarity. Same with the USB ports as well. Same number of USB ports. They allow you to add um, USB drive for localized backups as well as UPSs, uh, smart UPSs and other systems and other devices to make them network accessible too. So overall, that's my main reasoning why this is just a better NAS overall. But is it worthy as, a, as an upgrade? Well, no. I don't think if you own the DS1618 Plus, you should upgrade to the new system. It's only been around a couple of years, and although you do get performance benefits from it, I would argue that if you are looking to upgrade your 1618, the hassle you're going to go through to buy a brand new NAS, it's better to aim a little higher. Maybe go for the DS1621, it's a Xeon, it's 10 GBE, it's five years warranty. It's If you are upgrading from a 1618, I do not consider this to be a sensible upgrade for you if you already own that device or one beneath it. I think you should look into something a bit bigger there, which although may be close to twice the price, I would still argue is a better long-term upgrade if the 1618 wasn't quite enough for you. Now, what about, what, you know, why should you not buy it at all? Because I do think you should buy this NAS if you are looking at a 6-bay from Synology. It's the best one they've put out at this price point. And again, that one at the back is still pretty good. I would argue it's still not perfect. There are things about it that um, are, I'm not going to say flaws, but I'm going to say consistent threads uh, between the older generation and the new one, which I would have liked to have seen upgraded. First and foremost, 1GBE. It's very disappointing that this device only has 1GBE on board. We would have liked to have seen 2.5 and stuff like that, even if it would have led to uh, limitations in other areas. Um, I do think the ability to have uh, M2 SSD cache inside and a PCI upgrade card, a PCIe upgrade card slot, it would have been better to remove those M2s add better ethernet port and then people could use like the E10 M20, um, uh, sorry, the E10 M20 Ti uh, combo card that's got NVMe SSD cache and 10 GBE down the line, rather than adding those two ports to upgrade later and thereby potentially limiting the PCIe lanes that could have been utilized by network ports. Now, it's still a very, very good NAS, but there's no avoiding that um, uh, the 1GBE ports on there have disappointed a number of people. The other thing, of course, is as, you know, as great as it is that Synology are embracing AMD rights, and, and hopefully we're going to see some embedded GPU uh, AMDs in the future. You never know, fingers crossed. It's still a real shame this does not have embedded graphics. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. This is a family of devices. Again, this 6 and the 8 and the 12 bay racks that we talked about they've never had embedded graphics processors per se. They've always used non-GPU CPUs that have got a bunch of power behind them for processing. So it's not surprising that this doesn't have it. Just would have been nice, you know? But this has been comparing the DS1618 Plus with the DS1621 XS, uh, uh, DS1621 Plus. Once again, picking between them, this is the better NAS. If you're upgrading, maybe skip to that one over there. And overall, I do think it's a good NAS, although it might not be for everyone. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Click like if you want to learn more. Click, oh, sorry, click like if you've enjoyed it, I should say. And click subscribe if you want to learn more. And do visit the links in the description to Span.com and NAS Compares to learn more about this device, whether it's right for you to get some free advice overall and get your NAS today. Otherwise, I will see you next time.